Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A, a question for Mr. Anderson. Um, we've been a lot of talk uh, around PTC and uh, major accidents uh, in Philadelphia and Washington, which uh, were somewhat similar, at least in your findings, thought there were some similarities. Both um, were PTC preventable, but likely could have also been prevented with uh, better training of the crew members and engineers. And so I'd like to hear uh, what your response has been uh, in regards to the training of uh, your employees after those accidents. Um, very good point. I mean, I, I do have to emphasize that while training and professionalism are very important, you really do have to have fail-safe systems like PTC. We learned that in aviation um, because when you leave it to a single person to remember everything about a route, no matter how well qualified, sometimes you're going to have human error. With that said, we are standing up an aviation SMS system today at Amtrak and um, making whatever investments are necessary in standards, training, we need to move to full simulation instead of training people out on the railroad to move to the aviation model and to basically operate the way an airline operates with a standardized quality assurance training in standards organization. A lot of progress has been made since 188. A lot of investment has been made in centralized training and bringing the right resources on board. But we obviously owe you and owe our customers a much better result. Thank you. Uh, then another question for you, Mr. Anderson. Um, I'd like to understand the um, legal impact of an accident uh, similar to the one which just recently occurred in terms of liability. And there was an AP article recently that uh, I'm, I think you're probably aware of um, where a previous uh, Amtrak executive was uh, quoted as uh, talking about no-fault contracts. And, of course, Amtrak, you, you enter into contracts with the freight railroads to use their line. Uh, and the premise of this article is that uh, there is uh, all the liability comes back to Amtrak, which, of course, is a publicly financed uh, railroad. And, again, the premise was there, there uh, are, that, that does not potentially provide, in fact, I'll I'll, I'll quote uh, quote from the article, the freight railroads, and I'm not uh, passing judgment here, I'm saying what was quoted, the freight railroads don't have an iron in the fire when it comes to making the safety improvements necessary to protect members of the public as a result of the contracts. So who is liable? Um, we, Amtrak is both a host and it, itself in the corridor, but it also operates on host railroads. And there's been a long and time-honored practice in the railroad industry since one of the members mentioned, every railroad operates on someone else's railroad at some point in the course of a journey. And there has to be an apportionment of responsibility, and that apportionment is the user of the railroad indemnifies the host. So when Amtrak has users of its railroad in the corridor, we are fully indemnified. And when we operate on other hosts, we indemnify those hosts. And I think it's been that way in the railroad industry for 100 years. Now, I will note, just from a taxpayer standpoint, we carry general uh, indemnity insurance. We have a $20 million deductible. Um, the rest is covered with a normal sort of Lloyd slip. So we have plenty of insurance, and then we have a statutory cap on damages. Let me just drill in because I only have a minute left. So can you specifically address the South Carolina incident where it, um, you know, at least the quote from Amtrak, I don't know if it was from you, was that uh, it was uh, the fault of a switch that had been improperly, um, I don't know what the term is for that, but um, who will be liable in a case like that? Um, well, I would have to check and get back to you on the agreements, but essentially we will be responsible for everyone on the train and our train. So we will be responsible for all of the Amtrak related um, train passengers and employees and uh, the host railroad will be responsible for theirs. But I, 
I, I have to defer to Bob on the cause of the... Uh, and I'm action. sorry, I'm, I'm out of time. Is, is okay. this something that you would be willing to provide some additional written sure. information to perhaps to the chair of the committee? I'd, I'd be interested in I no longer have a valid law license, so right. I should do it in writing. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>